the drug industry has been a pretty bad situation for quite a while, especially the opioid epidemic. So, in this story, we're going to go over the big three drug distributors in J and J reach a landmark twenty-six billion dollar opioid settlement. So let's get right into it. So a group of state attorneys generals unveiled on Wednesday a landmark $26 billion settlement resolving claims that the three largest U.S. drug distributors and drug maker Johnson & Johnson helped fuel a deadly nationwide opioid epidemic. So under the settlement proposal, the distributors McKesson, Cardinal Health, and Amerisource Bergen are expected to pay a combined $21 billion, while Johnson & Johnson would pay $5 billion. So one day earlier on Tuesday, the three distributors agreed to pay up to $1.18 billion to settle claims by the New York State and two of its biggest counties, Nassau and Suffolk, over the opioid epidemic issue. There's not enough money in the world, frankly, to address the pain and suffering, said Connecticut Attorney General William Tong. He said the deal was the second largest cash settlement ever, trailing only the $200 billion tobacco agreement reached in the late 1990s, adding that the money will help where help is needed. But here's the thing, right? Like, this is kind of like a situation where, like, it might already be too late. Now, if People are not familiar with it, but basically opioids are pretty much legal drugs. Or like, you know, basically there's a lot of drugs in hospitals that are opioids that are extremely highly addictive and a lot of people overdose them. But it's also available to people in legal forms. And there's going to be like a lot of people and there has been a lot of people that passed away or has been addicted where their lives are destroyed, where they're still on this stuff that they can't get off of this stuff. Oh, you got like an ache in your back. You're going to take an opioid, right? Like it's a bigger issue than some people may even uh, be aware of. And it's cost people basically their livelihoods. It's cost people their lives. It's cost family members like family relations, right? Like there's so much cost because of the whole opioid epidemic that it's honestly at like an insane level. Like it's like almost like at a non-tangible amount of damage because it's just so widespread and so addictive. So let's continue. So settlement money from the distributors will be paid out over the next 18 years. That is too long. J&J will pay over nine years with up to $3.7 billion paid during the first three years. And the distributors were accused of lax controls that allowed massive amounts of addictive painkillers to be diverted into illegal channels devastating communities while J&J was accused of downplaying the addiction risk in its opioid marketing. And the companies have denied the allegations. But again, here's the thing. It's not just the problem of these companies, right? Like, they're obviously doing it for one main reason, to make money. But guess what? The hospitals with the doctors that knew full well how addictive these things were because of all, obviously, the studies that they have access to, and, like, they had to be pitched to provide this, right? So all these hospitals that, like, just willingly and easily just push these sort of stuff to their patients you know you got to put some blame on them too right like the companies here yeah they're they should definitely be held responsible like they made this stuff they sold this stuff like crazy but at the same time you also got to blame all these hospitals and doctors that kept pushing this crap onto their patients as well right like this is a much wider net that needs to be uh, released out in the world to really cover what's actually really going on. So the settlement also calls for the creation of an independent clearinghouse to provide all three distributors and state regulators aggregated data about where drugs 
are going and how often. And I told negotiators help will help reduce pills being overshipped to communities. So the ultimate amount the companies may have to pay will depend on the extent states sign up for the settlement and confirm their cities and counties are on board. And then the opioid crisis has been blamed for hundreds of thousands of U.S. overdose deaths since 1999, but has hit some regions much harder than others, creating divisions among governments when it comes to evaluating the settlement. Now, here's the thing, right? This is still an issue. It's still going to always be an issue. And the thing is, okay, there's this massive cash settlement, right? But what's actually going to come out of it, right? Are they like saying, like, oh, this is such a massive settlement. It's going to provide so many different things to so many different communities. How, right? If you're going to give this money straight to the government and not the people that is directly affected, how is this going to actually help anyone, right? You don't give it to the government. You help the people that literally overdosed on this or their families, or like the actual literal communities where this is rampant, but you don't give it to the government, right? Like, what the hell is the government going to do with a massive amount of cash? They're going to spend it on a whole bunch of useless things, right? So that's just something to really think about. I mean, feel free to contact us at 40 com with your thoughts. But here's the thing, right? Like, this is a very depressing and serious issue right like this amount of money is too small the amount of time frame is too long and not everyone is actually being punished in this situation because you got to also go after the hospitals you got to go after the really corrupt doctors that were pilfering all this crap to people right just willy-nilly like oh yeah here here you go prescription for you for a bunch of opioids for like a sprain in your wrist or something like something crazy right like Pretty much, you have to basically argue with hospital, like basically nurses or doctors nowadays, to not get painkillers if you were to go in there for like some sort of injury or something. Like you have to like literally argue with them, like, "Hey, don't give me any of this crap." And it gets like really like dirty when you really think about it. Okay. So the attorney general said that they anticipate broad support, which is required before the companies fully fund the agreement. States will have 30 days to evaluate the agreement, and the expectation is north of 40 and well north of 40 will sign on, said North Carolina Attorney General Josh Stein. Not nearly good enough, Washington State's Attorney General Bob Ferguson said he would not join the deal. The settlement is, to be blunt, not nearly good enough for Washington, he said. The state's trial against the drug distributors begins on September 7th, and a January trial is set against Johnson & Johnson. What do you know, by the way, right? Isn't it kind of funny that you have Johnson & Johnson Johnson being held liable for the opioid epidemic, right? And yet they also, for a while, was doing the COVID vaccine. I just find that kind of hilarious. So to get the full payout, a critical mass is needed. The maximum payment requires at least 48 states, 98% of litigating local governments, and 97% of the jurisdictions that have yet to sue. A person familiar with the settlement said, in electing to participate only guarantees a state 55% of its share of the settlement as a base amount, the person said, and the other 45% is contingent on the state through legislation or agreement being able to get its political sub divisions on board and assuring that companies an end to litigation the source said in local governments have up to 120 days to join and more than 3,000 lawsuits related to the health crisis mostly by state and local governments have been filed but here's the, again the thing this still doesn't actually like give really any details as to where this money is going right I'm like skipping a whole bunch of this nonsense right like Okay, you know, a massive settlement will be, like, agreed. Most likely, the majority of the states will end up agreeing to it. And here's the thing. So every state is going to get a piece of this money, right? But where are these states actually going to put the money, right? Like, what the hell are they actually going to be doing 
with the money, and you got to ask yourself that. And like when this stuff ends up most likely clearing to the point where like this was actually going to get like signed in and all that kind of stuff for the settlement. Where is the money going? And it'd be interesting to see the story later on, right? So make sure you're subscribed and all that to see the story later on in the future. But like, this is the problem that you got to see with a lot of these types of settlements. It's almost more of like a media ploy while also like basically saying like, oh, like these states are like, working on behalf of the people. They're doing this for the people that were affected about this because of this, right? Because of the whole opioid epidemic, right? But most likely when everything is like settled after all this and you start to actually like track where the money went, you're probably going to see nearly every single state line their pockets and not really help out any of the communities that were drastically affected by the opioid epidemic, right? And that's going to be very sad to see. It's going to be really messed up. And here's the thing, right? Since, you know, we focus on like finance-related content, like personal finance-related content, every state that ends up getting a portion of this settlement can do actually a lot of good work in communities that where this actually affects people, right? They could put money, let's say, in basically rehab clinics to really help people get like weaned off of opioids to really save their lives, right? Or help educate people in like preventing them from actually getting onto it and completely disallowing these types of opioids, right? But Every state is going to be kind of like screwed up in how they go about and doing this. It's going to be very interesting again to see where it goes, but pretty much you could kind of assume that nearly every state, regardless of where the states, the lean left, right, center ish, whatever, right? They're all going to screw up and they're all going to basically just line their pockets and pretty much not help anyone at all that was affected by any of this. But if you think I'm wrong, Feel free to give us your thoughts on 40inbox.com. There's a contact us thing. And if you like are able to track where the money is most likely going or some of the states are going, that'd be pretty interesting to see as well.